Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, we've got Matt behind the camera. Noel's out working on our audio podcast. Most importantly, you're here, and that makes this stuff they don't want you to know. This week, we went on the road again. That's not the Willie Nelson song, that's what happened. And we encountered something strange that we wanted to bring to your attention, something most Americans are not aware of. If you're driving through the eastern half of West Virginia, a little tip of Maryland or part of Virginia proper, you may encounter a situation where all of a sudden your cell phones may stop working, receiving no signal. The radio broadcasting stations may dissolve into white noise. You may see payphones that people are actually using. These three signs together may make you think, oh, it's simply the Allegheny Mountains, and my cell phone carrier has lost reception due to the massive amounts of rock surrounding me. However, while that is possible, it is also possible that you have unwittingly stumbled upon one of the most unique regions on the North American continent, and that is the U.S. National Radio Quiet Zone. Created by the FCC in 1958, the U.S. National Radio Quiet Zone is a place that is purposefully built to stymie all radio signals, except for a few exceptions. Those exceptions being emergency broadcast bands, so think firefighters, ambulances, police forces, citizen bands, you know, and uh, shortwave radio, stuff like that, and one AM radio station that's frequency is low enough to not interfere with the business occurring in the radio quiet zone. So first questions first, of course, why build this? What is this thing? What, what's inside? Here are three things you can find inside the radio quiet zone. First, and perhaps the most well-known, uh, are giant radio telescopes located in Green Bank and Sugar Grove. The one in Green Bank is the world's largest steerable radio telescope, and it's massive. Uh, the security around this is pretty tight because it's a very, very sensitive instrument. You cannot bring a car within a mile of the telescope, and the zone itself is dampening all other radio traffic or the vast majority of other radio traffic so that it reduces the pollution and makes sure that the radio telescope is able to pick up the best possible signals from outer space. And this might sound a little weird, you know, describing a radio telescope instead of a light telescope, but the principles are the same. So if you use a telescope in the city, to gaze up at the night sky, all the light around you, the ambient light from street lights, buildings, cars, other people, will all interfere with your ability to see what's up there. And the same applies with radio waves. So the official purpose of the radio quiet zone is to enable better, more efficient research using these telescopes. Number two, you will find people who believe they have electromagnetic sensitivities. Uh, If you are familiar with the show Better Call Saul, one of the characters in there is a person who believes that they suffer from something like this. And in the passage of the show, when people run into this person, they are forced to, you know, divest themselves of their electronics, uh, other metal devices or internet capable things. Uh, The idea being that these signals can be harmful to some people. They see it as an allergy. Now, whether or not you believe that is true, that the condition genuinely exists, it is true that people who feel they have this condition are purposefully traveling to the radio quiet zone because they believe it is a curative atmosphere. There are genuinely people doing that. And the government, of course, is not forcing them out. There are small towns throughout this this area, throughout this 1,300 square miles. They, they live there. It's their day-to-day life. So for people who suffer from this condition, this is in many ways close to a paradise. Third, and for the purposes of our upcoming research and podcast, perhaps the most intriguing thing located inside this massive quiet zone, military intelligence operations. Imagine how advantageous it is to have a facility that is inaccessible by some of the wireless hacks or remote exploits that are employed by other private and state-run espionage outfits. Would a government know the value of this? Uncle Sam seems to, because one of these facilities is at Sugar Grove. They're in the heart of the quiet zone. It is the Navy's Information Operations Command, gathering electronic intelligence. 
naval network warfare type of stuff. And that's all, that's just the, the tip of what we know about. Think of how much more difficult it is for people to investigate this area. You know, you can maybe have a walkie talkie with a range of two miles, but your cell phone won't work. You can't upload a video to show people what's going on. And as we continue looking into this, we'd like to hear from you, residents of Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, surrounding areas, or people who've simply passed through on a journey from point A to point B. What have you seen in the quiet zone? What was your experience like? Do you believe that this quiet zone exists solely to support radio telescopes? So far, we're seeing arguments on both sides, uh, from the extreme of people saying it's the seat of a uh, hideout for a contingency government in the case of a nuclear attack or EMP kind of weapon, to uh, people who say that this is just for a radio telescope and that soon, due to funding problems, the funding will get cut short and the quiet zone will once again be filled with the sound of the FM radio music. And also, what individual secrets this place could hide. Imagine you want to get off the grid and you don't want your phone to be found. You want a place to disappear. Would this be a good starting point? Of course, we're not, we're not suggesting that at all. What we are suggesting is that you stay tuned for an audio podcast on this topic. And in the meantime, let us know down in the comments your thoughts on the U.S. Radio Quiet Zone. If there's anything in your country or your neck of the woods that is similar, we'd like to hear about that too. What do you think they're up to in there? And if you're not comfortable leaving a comment on YouTube for all to see, we understand that as well. Please check out our website, stufftheydontwantyoutoknow.com, and write to us with your thoughts directly at conspiracy at howstuffworks.com.